In this lesson, we're going to look at how language changed in England in the Middle Ages. Let's have a look at what we've learned so far. There were definite patterns to the development of language in England across the ages, and most of these patterns were linked into invasions by different groups of people. So we looked at the Romans and the changes that they brought to our language, which included the development of words that originated in Latin and the changes to place names that still survive today. We met the Anglo-Saxons who were different Germanic tribes who came over from Europe. They developed what we now recognise most closely as English words that remain in our language. Then we had the Viking invasion and the Vikings brought new vocabulary and again they are recorded forever in some of the place names that we drive past every day, walk past every day. And then finally, we looked at the Norman invasion. So this was the development of new vocabulary linked to French and therefore more Latinate words. So most of the changes that have taken place have been as a result of the invasion of different types of people from different parts of the world into the country of England. So how did things change? Well, first of all, in the Middle Ages, which is the period of time between about 1350 up to 1600, there were no more invasions. So this means that no longer were people invading from other countries and bringing their own languages into England. What that meant was the language that we'd established, the language that we were speaking with all that mixture of words from different countries, the language was able to stabilise. Now, if you think about when you learned to ride a bike and you had stabilisers on the side, you might have done anyway, um, what they do is they keep the bike steady. They keep the bike stable. So with no more invasions, the language that had come to be known as English was able to stabilise. It stayed very steady. Words didn't change uh, so often. We didn't get new words in our vocabulary so often. So that meant that we were able to establish consistency. Consistency is the idea of things being the same. So if you are consistently hardworking, it means you are always hardworking. Now language is able to become consistent when it stops changing. And this lesson is all about how our language became more consistent. One of the most significant things to happen in the Middle Ages was the invention of the printing press. The printing press was a system developed by somebody called Johann Gutenberg in Germany in the 1400s and it involved printing with movable type. Now what that means is if you look on the pictures on the left people would carve out individual letters or characters or words and then place them in an order to make up the sentence and then they would put ink over the top and then press the paper down onto it thereby printing a page of text. So this meant the invention of the printing press meant that for the first time it was possible to reproduce multiple copies of the same work. Before the printing press, books were usually copied by hand. They were written in manuscript, which was a word we looked at um, in lessons before. It was therefore very expensive. If you wanted to have a copy of something, you would have to pay a significant amount of money because it took so long for it to be created. What the printing press did was made books and stories and writings, Bibles included, more affordable because they were quicker to produce. Here's a picture of a Gutenberg printing press. It's important to note that Johann Gutenberg didn't invent printing as such. What he did was develop this machine to do it quickly. Printing using individual blocks of type that were carved was really started by the Chinese hundreds of years before. One of the reasons that printing in this quick way caught on in Europe in a much more 
speedier fashion than it did in China is because in China there are tens of thousands of characters in use in the Chinese alphabet, whereas in European alphabets you're limited to around 30 or less. So you could print more quickly using the printing press, but you could print more quickly using the printing press in Europe because there were far fewer words, characters that you had to carve out in the first place in order to print a page of text. One of the most important things that developed as a result of the invention of the printing press was the standardization of the spelling of words. So if you think about it, if a text is suddenly being reproduced a lot, it becomes increasingly important that the words in that text, the words in the story or the words in the article are spelt in a way that people will be able to recognize. The most interesting thing about this, though, is that dictionaries did not officially exist until 200 years after the invention of the printing press. Now, this is the really cool bit. Because of this, the people who were in charge of printing presses, sometimes when they were translating works from other countries to be published in England, they would have to create words in English that hadn't previously existed. At the same time, they might have to make decisions on a spelling that would then become standardised, and that spelling would have come out of the mind of one individual who decided, well, this is how I'm going to spell this word, and then it sticks because it's then printed on paper. Your job, this lesson, is to do some research on a man called William Caxton. Now, William Caxton is responsible for introducing the printing press to England. He discovered it whilst he was living in Belgium and around Germany. Now, he brought the printing press back to England. Your job is to go to the website that is listed here. and It's also on your classroom. It's a page from the British Library website. And on that page, there's an article all about William Caxton, who he was, where he came from, what his life was like and how he changed the English language. Your job is to make a fact sheet so you can do it as a one side A4. You can do it folded if you like. You can do it on Word. You can do it in pen. Um, I want you to create a fact sheet all about William Caxton that gives me the most important information that you found from this article. Okay, enjoy. <laughs>